first of all, I have to apologize because I know there is this TED rule that you should not advertise products in your talk, but I am going to talk about the nano supermarket and have lots of products to show. <laughs> uh, but first, uh, let's talk a little bit about nanotechnology. What do we know about it? Nanotechnology is technology on the scale of one billionth of a meter. That's extremely small. You are really operating then at the level of atoms and molecules. And we can, can do some great things there. We, we, we feel some wonderful potential there. At least companies and governments do, because they are investing billions of euros and do dollars currently in nanotechnology. And um, what do we know about it? We know it's something small. Most people know that. And that's always what's being discussed. And I actually think we should move on to the next uh, question, which is how does this technology change our lives? I think that's an important question to ask when you're talking about <coughs> nanotechnology. So we need to have a nano debate on this. And this debate is happening now on television, on the radio, in the newspapers. Um, but I also now propose to take this debate to the supermarket. Because the supermarket is a fascinating space. We don't realize it always, uh, but it's both a very mundane and everyday place, but it's also highly technological. And uh, maybe it's because we go there every week that we even think it's boring. But just imagine for a moment that you would take a caveman, a caveman, and put the caveman in a contemporary supermarket around the corner. He would not understand one bit of it. He would think he was no longer on Earth. I mean, packaged meat, power milk, um, light products, pregnancy test. For cavemen, it would all be mysteries, but we think it's normal. And sometimes there's a new product in the supermarket, and then for a moment we think, oh, a new product. And then after a few weeks, we think it's normal. So the interesting thing for me about the supermarket, that it is in fact this reality machine where new habits, lifestyles and technologies become part of our everyday life. Hence it is the proper place to have a debate about nanotechnology. And that's why we made the nano supermarket. And this is our logo. <laughs> and then some people ask why? Why is it so black and white? Couldn't you make it a little bit more colorful? Well, we tried that. Uh, we had some variations. This was the cheap version, actually. <laughs> but in the end, we chose this supermarket noir style because we wanted to have different products in the supermarket, both products that are just beautiful and innovative, but also products that are a little bit uncanny or scary. And all our products in our supermarket are speculative. They are speculative products that might hit the shelves within the next 10 years. Our supermarket is outside, it's mobile. Uh, actually, well, this is not it. This was our inspiration. Um, but of course, it's too retro, so we had to combine it with something futuristic. And then in the end, we have our nano supermarket here. And uh, inside this nano supermarket, we have these products and they are submitted by designers, artists and engineers from seven different countries. So now for the remainder of the time, I will show some products and I will do this very rapidly. So buckle up. Buckle up. Um, I think our most favorite product is the wall smart, the interactive paint. You can change the color of the wall as many times as you like. It's based on magnetic nano rods that bend the light. Another product is the nano wine. It contains millions of uh, nano, well, not particles, nano containers and uh, capsules. They can remain closed and they will just move through your body. You will not notice. But when they open up, they alter the taste of the wine. So in the end, you can get a wine that can be any wine. And you, you, you fix your wine in your microwave. That's the idea. So you will be using the microwave in a very different way, not to heat up products, but to change the taste of products. Uh, more food technology. Uh, well, nowadays, many people um, use lots of medicines. Some, especially elderly people, some people use 20 pills every day. And this is not a good quality of life. 
So perhaps we could incorporate the medicines in food. So then you would have this personalized sushi set that has all your pres prescriptions in there. Do we want this? I mean, this starts to be slightly uncanny. Uh, another product that's also, well, it's wonderful, but I don't know, it, the Twitter implant. <laughs> the Twitter implant, you, uh, you, you don't have to buy it, you get it for free from your health insurance company. They give it to you, and then it is inserted in your jaw, and it starts twittering everything that happens in your body. So when I go running, it's being twittered. And, but then when my heart rate is too high, it's also being twittered. So my doctor knows he has to contact me. That's wonderful. <laughs> of course, when I drink too much nano wine, it's also being twittered. And I will probably get a health penalty on my health insurance. So that we don't want. Um, more beautiful product is uh, the lateral LB lamp, an eco-friendly lamp that's solar powered by elks, algae that are inside. Or this one, I think this is a very poetic application of tissue engineering. Um, when a couple gets married, you first have to go to the dentist, a little piece of bone is chopped from your jaw and then this is grown into this beautiful wedding ring. So in the end you will have a wedding ring made from the bone of your partner. <laughs> and uh, finally, the, the nano lift. Uh, it's, well, it will be the next thing after Botox. You go to the clinic once to get your nano lift injections. And then once you have them, you can use this handy nano lift stick to sculpt your face. <laughs> so when you go to a party and you want to have this really sexy Angelina Jolie lift, you can sculpt them, but then the next day when you have a serious business meeting, you make them a little bit more modest. Photoshop finally becomes physical. Now, again, these products are speculative, so I'm not saying that they will all hit the market. Actually, Personally, I'm not interested in predicting the future at all. This is not about predicting the future, rather it is about building scenarios for potential futures that help us decide what future we actually want. And although all the products are speculative, in the end, the debate we are creating is very real. Thank you.